<laughs> oh, he started with, I don't. It's not a beer, though. Mine's already open. Do we have beer? Yeah, there's bottles in there. Oh. Do you want? Do we? I, th- I think I think we have. Now, now I have to drink this, though. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just sitting here enjoying my life. Tom and Heather are the best hosts ever. All right. I think it's a twist off. Oh, that is so American. I'm not 100% sure, though. He- Heather said she thinks it's a twist off because it's domestic. It doesn't look like that, though. Yeah, that's so why I was like, I don't want to. We're going to try. Oh, no, it's not. I think that's why I brought this. Because then we can do this. Oof. That. And then you should do like. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. It is, uh, it is amazing to be here. It's very surreal. How, how long has it been? Since we had a podcast? Yeah. Since October of 2021, since right before your shoulder. Wow. Because we were supposed to record when we had to go to the doctor. Yeah. And I, I, I like texted you. I was like, hey, you up for a podcast? You're like, my arm hurts. I need to go to the doctor. And I was like, oh, I hope it'll be fine. His <laughs> arm is probably sprained or something. And then you were knocked out for like weeks. <laughs> and then know. that threw you behind on work. And then now it's oh, June. Oh, man. Like that entire era, I'm going to call it an era. Yeah. Because it was like three months it was so strange i I remember before it happened you were telling me like okay we're going into october here's all the plans that i have i have these crazy opportunities i have these commitments i have these everything and it's gonna be great and we were like we're gonna do a podcast every week to the end of the year at least put it on the calendar (laughs) it was going like clockwork for a while yeah it was (laughs) and then it just didn't everything just died with that like the, the entire, it was so strange as well because like the blood clot was, it's something that I never, never experienced because it went from like, I'm doing well, I'm having a little bit of pain in yeah. my arm till like I'm almost dying. In like a week. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I remember that all the work, like that is one downside with being a YouTuber is that like there's no one there that does that for you. No one can be in front of the camera. Yeah. And you were doing time sensitive stuff too. That oh, was yeah, like supposed sure. to come out on. It was like, I had, I remember I had the Mavic yeah. video. I had the Ronin video and there was like, there was so many videos that I had to have finished. Like the, I, I think I made a video for MSI Yeah. at the same time. And, and all of that just like, <laughs> I got to throw, throw it over there. And the weird thing was that those videos were kind of like, if I didn't make those videos, I would not be able to have the amount of money that right. I Right, they were expected. important ones. Yeah, because there, there was a lot of money involved in those. And it was the end of the year. Yes. So there's not a lot of time to make it up. So it was like November. I was. I, I think I was the most stressed that I've ever been right around there. But then I also got back, like when we didn't do the podcast, I got back to like the working out part. Yeah. And started to really think like what is actually worth spending my time like on right now yeah and that was what i feel like i wanted to focus on me and me only right now yeah no for sure because you <laughs> you flies. can't do yeah there's a lot of <laughs> flies out here if you're just listening to the audio only version we're outside in my backyard yeah. in california <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i didn't even think if, about that <laughs> if you're seeing a video of this you know that because you're like why is there a palm tree but if you're listening you're like why do they have this weird ambient <laughs> Like, like, yeah, why? why it's like helicopters, airplane airplanes. But you know what? We wanted to take advantage of, I don't know, we can record in our studios anytime. Yeah, of course. But it's, it's, it's crazy. But yeah, we can't do, as we both know, you can't do anything if you're not taken care of and okay. Yeah, I mean, like, I think the first day <laughs> when I arrived here kind of like reminded us of how fragile we are as humans again. Yeah. <laughs> it would be a lot easier to be like a robot or a machine. Yes. But nope, we are not. When I was on the flight over here, I was starting to feel like a little bad. You know, my stomach, yeah. I, was, I was going to the toilet on the airplane and I felt like, oh, there, there's something like not feeling Something's that not good. Right. And then, you know, I had a couple of whiskeys on the plane and I had a few beers and then like I landed, there was jet lag and I thought like, yeah, it's probably, I'm, I'm tired, right? Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, because you were awake for 22 hours at least yeah. that day. Yeah. And you traveled literally to the other side of the planet. <laughs> so it makes sense that you would not feel great. Of course. <laughs> but then it was, then it was, uh, let's just say that it was coming out, the beer was coming out uh, from the wrong hole. Like, it's, yeah, it was strange. And that was for like one and a half day. 
and uh, we couldn't do anything. We couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't do anything. I was sleeping. There was we were pretty location bound. Yeah, for that and yeah, and that luckily. Then yesterday you started feeling good, today yes. you're feeling great. And now Tom is starting to feel Today I'm nice. feeling a little funky. <laughs> but we're hoping that you're I woke up feeling a little strange and we're supposed to leave today to go to L.A. to kind of like have an L.A. day and then you leave tomorrow. Yeah. And that would be great because I. it's a very <laughs> cool spot. We have two hotel rooms. I even specifically got you like a, what should be like a nice corner-ish oh. view room of like the harbor. You can do time lapses out the window, sunset view. This man... <laughs> he's the best host ever. He and Heather. Not just of podcasts, but of guests as well. <laughs> it's like getting into the guest room. There's like a note. Here's the Wi-Fi password. <laughs> Have a little bit of snack. He even bought Swedish fish. <laughs> yeah, which I know are not like super popular in Sweden, but it really made me laugh. Oh, <laughs> that like it, I don't know. So how how has your how has your time been ever since October? Oh oh my god, oh my god! It's, it's, it's like that feels like four years ago. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's been great. Like, it's been because it officially passed one year of not of working for myself. Yeah. Of not having a regular that job working awesome. for myself. Yeah. Um, because when you start, it's like, okay, maybe I'm just riding some momentum yeah. and it's, this is going to fall apart after three months. But it's like, well, now it's well over a year. Uh, and that's huge. And it's, that feels really, really good. So, so right now you feel like you do not want to go back. I couldn't. I, some, I mean... <laughs> I don't know, there's no wood here to not, but something would have to go really wrong. Like, yeah. that would be a desperate situation. I don't think Heather would let me go back to what I was doing before. Mm. But, yeah, and, and it's, it's so crazy, too. The thing I've learned, I guess, this is actually an important one, is people see what you're doing and they want you, you know, I'm sure you get, like, job offers from time to time where people are like, if you want to come with us, yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. For sure. And that feels really good, yeah. especially in a world where that's not something you can always get. And so I always politely and gratefully say no, because some of them are really cool ones where if I had a different job, I'd be like, yeah, I definitely want this. <laughs> <laughs> but with what I have now, the answer is no. But it's nice to know there are people who root for you. So if things go wrong, they don't want you to fail. You build up a network of people who, if something were to even go wrong, they would help you yeah. not just fall to like... Oh, yeah, for sure. And, and you said like the job opportunities... Yeah, you know, coming in, and I think that one of, one of the things that I've realized is that I, as long as I'm seen, like on YouTube, on Instagram, there will be job opportunities. There will always be someone that's saying, "Hey, we need someone to film this right. client, or we need someone to help us do this client video." Yeah, and I've realized that as long as I'm active, the jobs will be there. So if it's like a safety were, net. Yeah, yeah. If something were to happen, I mean, like you, you would be good. Yeah. So that's that's the like the that's been a cool realization. And yeah. And so the, the past since October, that's it's been working on a lot of that and just trying to <laughs> be as good as I can be <laughs> and as you know get better every time and and all that kind of stuff. So it's been great. That like, is awesome. I feel like there's a nice rhythm and a nice you know that's so sustainable good to hear. rhythm. Yeah. That's so good to hear. So how about like, I know there's a lot to catch up on. Oh yeah. Um, We've been talking for like three days, and there's still a lot to catch up on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should have just been recording in the car and stuff the whole time. Uh, but now we're out here. So, how's America? <laughs> you know, I've been here once, 17 years ago. And one of, my, one of my most vivid memories, I told you the other day, is like someone throwing rocks at me from the public transport <laughs> in San Francisco. It's not a thing that we normally do here. I, I, it's not like a pastime. I, did, I didn't think that it was. But <laughs> it's like America is so different from Sweden in a way. Yeah. Every, everything is big. And like I don't know how many times I've pointed out the amount of trucks and pickups. <laughs> I have never noticed. And now for the rest of my life, I'm going to be like, there's a pickup, there's a pickup, there's a pickup. <laughs> and, and all the pickups seems to be like competing against each other like who to be the biggest, the biggest and the most lifted and <laughs> yeah. like yeah the biggest wheels the biggest tires yeah <laughs> oh yeah 100 but, percent. but it's also pretty cool to see how how different it is and how you know how everything that i see on tv shows is actually kind of the way it is in one way that's interesting yeah it's really it's really strange because being here you don't know like it's kind of normal like i have my life and then i watch tv and movies and it kind of seems like it's the same culture? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> but then you think like, well, wait. <laughs> the rest of the, like... Yeah, and, and, and 
it's not that Swedish is that much different. Right. But it's still a lot different. I was talking to Heather when you were out here setting this up that growing up in Sweden, it's it's very much like, especially growing up outside of the city. Yeah, yeah. When when we went and visited your city yeah. yesterday, it's like, it's way bigger. Than My, really? It, oh, yeah, yeah for wow, sure. Wow, we drove by the house I grew up in yesterday just because we happened to be passing through that town on the way to Joshua Tree to, like, do some videos. And I was like, you know... This is a weird detour, but I'm, I don't know when this opportunity is going to pop up again. So we're going to drive by, like, the house I grew up in, which is very run down now. It's not great. But it's a, I always – it's a very small town, and I grew up, like, there's nothing here. It was smaller when I was younger. And how many people lived there? Lived there now? Um, when how, you grew up? When I grew up, it was, like, 25,000 maybe. That's a small town. Like, the yeah. town where I grew up, it was, like, 1,000. Oh, that's, like, way small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so for me, it was, like, everyone knew everyone. Yeah legit everyone and you could get like my mom and dad said like hey just open go the door and, and go play and then get back when it's food and that's <laughs> that's it <laughs> you know yeah and I, there's like we have we have the right to roam everywhere you know as yeah. i told you we can just stop by the end of by the edge of the road and then jump into the forest and <laughs> don't have to worry about like trespassing yeah we were this was our this is our last resort which is this is actually great i'm very happy with this but we tried so hard yesterday to find oh, yeah. a podcast location <laughs> we found an amazing one that, that was, was like a good spot overlooking it was kind of overlooking a valley mountains sunset and there highway was highway and then there were huge power line things going which <laughs> which framed the shot and just looked big and crazy and then we got out of the car to we we're gonna set this setup up in like the back of the car and as soon as we got out, we just heard, you could just hear the electricity, which would have been annoying on Mike, but it also probably would have given us like superpowers or sickness or something. <laughs> yeah, both Maybe of that's us, why I'm feeling sick today. Both of us were like, uh, it doesn't feel safe. Should though. we sit here for an hour <laughs> yeah. and just like, <laughs> and then like all of a sudden, <laughs> <laughs> but then we, we, so we were like, okay, we're not going to do that. We were looking for other places, couldn't find any, but the sun was setting. So it was like, you know what, let's quickly find a random spot and and get some golden hour yeah. sunset photos. So we found a spot that is literally three minutes away from where I live, probably. And I had actually never been there, but I just seen people going through it. I was like, hey, maybe this thing will work. It went through and it was absolutely perfect. And it was the whole that thing. Was so good. Because it was what you were saying of, like this morning you were editing a video yeah. and there was a drone shot. And I was like, this is so cool with like the buildings and the har harbor and the river, whatever. And you're like, this is just what I'm used to. Yeah. And to go to a place that I've gone past a hundred times, but then to go there with someone else who's like, oh no, this, and it has this and we got this. And it's like, wow, like you do seeing the place you're used to yeah. through somebody else's eyes really yeah. opens up like, oh shoot. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and I think that that is also kind of the cool thing. When I go out here, everything is new for me. Yeah. Like, I, I've, I've never experienced this because when I was here the last time, I had no interest in yeah, photo so and video. teenager. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, that was like, I'm a rebel. That's why people but, are throwing rocks at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now it, you see things with a, another eye. You see it like everything looks interesting because it's nothing like home. You right. Know? So just being out there, the sun is setting, there's a little bit of smog or something, you know, it looks super hazy, the yeah. sand is blowing. I mean, like, I've never been to a desert <laughs> in my entire life. Yeah, it's the and, Breaking Bad playset. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, I've been to Dubai Desert, I have. That's definitely a desert. Yeah, it is. But it's it's still in Dubai, so it's like everything is a desert there. Yeah, it's very different <laughs> than here. But I mean, like, yeah, right now it is... My watch is now set to Celsius for this trip, so it's 32 degrees Celsius, <laughs> which is warm. It is. <laughs> you can definitely feel it. <laughs> yeah. I'll be changing my shirt later. Mm. But um, No, but jumping back to what you said about uh, seeing things from a different perspective, it kind of brings me, like, my thoughts to the vlog-style videos that, yeah. that I've been doing recently, which I have a lot of fun with. I love them. I was watching Peter edit a vlog, and the amount of times he laughs while editing <laughs> is great. <laughs> it, it's like if, if you're watching this or if you're listening to this and you want to see the video that we're talking about, it's it's the me flying in business, cl business class. I think it's called Taking a Break. And the thing is that when I shot that video, I had a feeling that this is going to look so boring. It's going to look so bad. It's going to be so incredibly boring to look at. But then as I was editing it, I, I also realized that like the editing is the superpower oh my God. that we want to have. Because just pressing a button, just cutting away this part, cutting away this part, it makes 
Like it makes everything. It makes it interesting. It makes it more frenetic. It makes it more upbeat. It makes oh my it God, more yeah. like, you know, stuff is happening all the time. So, because we kind of talked about this the other day, because editing, it seems like when there are people who want to start making videos and doing stuff and it starts to become a lot of work, yeah. it's the very first thing that people want to outsource. Yeah. I'll record the videos and I'm going to hire someone to edit them exactly. together. And I know you've, you've tried like working with people to edit videos and stuff too. So how do you feel about that? I, I think it's a great thing because it, the, the only way that I can get more time is to outsource the editing. Right. Right? Because I need to be in front of the camera. I can't, I, I can't have someone, <laughs> someone else, else sit, sit in front of the camera and then I edit the video. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it is also one of the personal things that I feel like if I remove that, it needs to be someone that I know can do the same thing or better than I do. And I have tried like with an editor in the studio, which is great. He's really good at what he does, but it still doesn't feel exactly the same. Yeah, it has to have like your, they have to really be toned into your style. Yes. And then finding someone who, who can do that, who has the skills, who has the awareness of like, this and, is that, but and also, also the speed and the speed and is okay like it has to be somebody who doesn't, who wants to edit somebody else's videos. Yes. Like, they, does, they, yeah, that's the thing because editors can't be, especially if there's an editor that I want to have. Like, I can't have someone that wants to be in front of the camera. It doesn't work because I am the one in front of the camera. <laughs> However, egoistic it might sound, but our job is to be in front of the camera. That's what the whole thing is built on. Yeah. Yeah, and, and YouTube is that. It's like you either are doing the voiceover or you're making the video like it's your thing yeah so being someone that does like the editing part and you know the the recording part you gotta you gotta find like the mid ground of what can i give away and what can i keep yeah like what 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 is me and what is someone else can do and i right. feel like the editing part is it is a tough thing. It, and it depends on the video, too, of course. Oh, yeah, like, for sure. There are some that are much easier for another person to handle versus, oh, yeah. like, the vlog you made today. Nobody else could have made that. No. And I, <laughs> I feel like the vlog the vlog I made, I, I, like, my vlogs, I would never want anyone else Right. That's the whole them. point. It's almost like a diary. Like, yeah. someone else writes and your I diary. <laughs> I, I feel like the vlogs are so interesting for me to make because it's it's a way of making my day interesting or my experience yeah. interesting for myself as well because yeah. when i experience it i mean like that was a 12-hour flight and i cut it down to like six minutes yeah and and yeah i mean there's that part of it and there's a the part of it it gives you because even though i don't make a lot of vlog videos or anything anymore but early on in my channel, I did, and it, it built something in that is still there where you just start looking at things differently because yeah. everything is like, what's interesting about this? How could I approach this? How, like, you just start, which, which makes you more aware, actually. Yeah, for sure. Because you kind of think, like, if you're out filming something all the time, you're going to be disconnected from what you're doing. But in a way, it almost makes you more connected yeah. because you're, like, hyper aware of everything and every possibility. And, yes. And that it's kind of cool. It is. And I think, I think that when it comes to creating videos, it's it's very easy to get caught up in that you you need to have the latest and greatest gear. You need, oh yeah. You, you need to be like having a. We talked about this yesterday. Having a story. You need to have like the best subject that you create your vlog around. Yeah. Now, if you want to make a video, then make a video. You don't have to know what the video is going to be about, because as long as you're practicing the editing part of it. You're going to be able to find right. what the video is about when you're editing. It. And that was the key thing, because that's what you said when we were talking yesterday, was if you want to do it, not like, okay, I have to do something today, yes. and then you're you're really forcing things. But if you're like, you have the urge, like, I, I really want to make a thing, I want to do something. And then, like you said, you just jump into it in the morning, and oh, you're yeah. like, I don't know what it's going to be, but by the end of the day, <laughs> it just turned into something. Yeah, and... and all my videos, all my not all my videos, but all my vlogs, I'm going to say, starts out... Not what you see, but what I record. Yeah. It's basically at home in the morning. <laughs> Me just... Boiling eggs. Boiling eggs or <laughs> talking to the camera, brushing my teeth, whatever it might be. But I think that when you get into the habit of recording in the morning, then you also don't feel stressed. Because when you get towards the end of the day, you do know that you started recording in the morning. So you have like one hour of footage. Yeah. Right? No shortage. Yeah. And that's... There's... The, it, it's it's stressful when you have too much and you can't like it's almost too much to go through and piece together. But nothing is worse when it comes to editing than no. like I just don't have 
<laughs> there's not enough here and it's not something i can go back and like fix oh man when i was down with peter like <laughs> i was feeling that the entire time i'm like should i be recording right now or should I, should I like leave the camera? I, I, should, I should, yeah. <laughs> I think how you felt on that trip is probably how I feel on this trip. Mm. Um, because I, I'm, I, obviously like you were KO'd for a day or so, which yeah. in a way I was totally fine with because when you were like lucid, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we just got to hang out and talk and there's yeah. no pressure. And that was actually like fantastic. Yeah, it was. And It's been a great time so far. Yeah, I love that. So that was cool. And then like starting yesterday, I was like, okay, let's go out and do stuff. And we had a, a very long active day yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> it, was. Um, it was an intense day. And, and I'm trying to like, it's, it's been very interesting for me. You're other than my wife, Heather, you're the only other like YouTube person that I've been around while yeah. they're making videos. I've never been like a part of or witness to or co-created with anybody. Um, if I, if I did and I forgot, I'm sorry, but, <laughs> but at least, at least on this, we're like from the point of you're outlining your video in the morning, figuring out some shots, we're going here, we're doing that, setting up the gear, yeah. like the whole process, how somebody works. It's absolutely fascinating. That's cool. It has also, uh, made me real. I had, so I don't know how to, d to describe <laughs> this and this is a good thing. This is a good learning experience for me when I'm alone. Yeah. I have so much confidence in my video making ability. I feel like I can get amazing, I can create what's in my mind, I can make it happen yeah. very well. Uh, I have a lot of fun doing it, but I'm mostly always by myself, whether it's inside, outside, whatever, and I can make it happen. As soon as eyes are on me, or there's something there, I, I like, there were times yesterday I was like, Tom, do you know how to use a camera? Have you like, have you focused the lens before? Like, do you not? And it's just because I think I was getting so like, nervous, or <laughs> like, because I have no problem admitting, and this is actually a great thing, your video photo skills are beyond mine. And yeah. it's really cool to, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it's really cool to to be around somebody who's better at what they what you do than you are. Yeah, thank you, first of all. No, <laughs> I, I don't mean it like that. It, it's, it's more like I've been doing. You put in a lot of time video, and reps Yeah, and I've, hours. I've been doing, like, video a lot. Yeah, I've it, been, the years I've been working with cameras are longer, but yes. the hours... I don't think are longer. No, and, and the amount of videos as well. And the amount, like the the amount of videos that I've actually published to YouTube that I've shot, you know, right. vid videos practicing the poker B roll, the whole process, like everything, it it adds up. And I think that that is like there's so many people that don't value that aspect of it because even though you don't get a lot of views, like the, the practice, every you get, skill you build, every skill set, you're gonna get better at shooting stuff. You're yeah. gonna get better at creating the videos that you want to create and people say oh it's so hard to vlog of course it is <laughs> like otherwise everyone would do <laughs> right. i mean like it's it's hard to vlog and everyone is looking at me or casey uh, now i'm like doing super comparisons here i'm, I'm not going to compare myself to casey <laughs> but everyone is was looking at casey right right and they had him like with his time lapses and tried to do the exact same thing but then again that is the issue. It becomes the exact same thing. Right. Right? So you got to find what, what works for you. And for me, something that I've realized is, for example, when I'm shooting a vlog, I've started to use a little bit more POV style. Yeah. Right? So the POV makes it more like I'm, in, I'm seeing what I, Peter is seeing. PLPOV. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Paul Paul. <laughs> Paul Pov. Um, yeah. Because you, you get inspired by the things and you, you take those and you try to do your version yes. of it. But... By the time you take what somebody else does, do your version of it, smash it with other things, then you have something that's different. Yeah, and it's the same thing with the time lapses. Yeah. I love the fact that Casey has time lapses yeah. in his videos. So I'm like, how can I apply this to my videos? And I take the time lapses. I do it differently because mm -hmm. I set the shutter to like one second. Yep. So you have that super smooth look. And I will probably be stealing this at points in oh, the yeah, future. Oh, yeah, you should. You should. It's great. It looks so good. <laughs> yeah. And it looks different. It gives you this like, whoa, what is going on? Like it's a lot more motion. It yeah, feels like a lot more it motion. It is. And everything is like it looks like silk, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. And, it's smooth. And that for me is applying my style to a style that he had. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Exactly. So when someone is doing the poker b-roll or when someone sends me a video of hey we did a copy of this and it is the exact same video. Right. I feel like it is great. They, I'm sure they learned something by yeah. making it. They learned something, and it is great. But why didn't you apply something from your own head, like right. from your own ideas, 
because you set this entire thing up like you could have made something better than we that. did the blackjack beat wrong <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> no but i i think that that is very important when it comes to making videos like don't be don't be caught up in trying to do what everyone else is doing because it's just going to be a copy of yeah them. it's 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 really interesting and it's I, it's been i was telling heather this last night like as we we were all like we were all going to, we went to bed and like, <laughs> you were over there at your side and and we were over here and i was just like you know she was super excited that we had such a fun day and we got to like go out and create stuff yeah. together and i was kind of telling her what i was telling you now about like yeah but it was i learned a lot about <laughs> myself because some of it is just stuff that I, it's nothing i need to it's just personal confidence yeah. it's just like of course because a thing that i was that i i just slipped into is like okay we're out here doing this and then like Peter's doing his video and I'm like, wait, I need to be like, why am I not filming something right now? It just was like, I, there's no time or like permission or this. And then feeling confident in, even if there was something that I do a little differently, that's okay. Yeah. Something that, that, you know, whatever it might be a, a setting or a technique or whatever, like you do yours your way, I do mine my way and both are fine. Of course. And just getting comfortable with that. And you, yeah. you, you kind of helped me cause you said something. Oh, I think you were talking about when you, when you were with, P Peter McKinnon yeah. and, he, and he was you were like oh yeah just seeing how he's putting his videos together yeah. and cataloging multiple ideas and going through them at once and then you were like I learned a lot from that and I'm like okay that's where it's like uh, yeah I feel the same way I'm seeing somebody else's process there's parts that are different I don't have to mirror that process no I should definitely be looking for things that I can cherry pick <laughs> and like of course and and incorporate into my own but it it was a very interesting thing of how different it felt from doing everything by myself always to just doing every to doing something with another person just nearby, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and somebody who knows what they're doing, yeah, because it's like you know, I am very used to being like the best photo video person, yeah, and that's not braggy, but it's like typically I'm the one who's done it the most, and I have the like, of course, you're the teacher. I'm usually the one, yeah, I was literally yeah. the one who's teaching other people how <laughs> yeah. to do it, and so to be in a situation where it's like you taught me so much about my camera yesterday <laughs> that I've had for over a year, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure there's more, uh, and, and skills and techniques and stuff, but it, it's just like, and, and not feeling frustrated because yeah. cause there, there's a thing, your ego can pop up really easily. If somebody tells you how to do something and it, it's like, Oh, they're saying I'm doing it wrong. They don't like mine. Instead of going like they're sharing really good info information with me to help me yeah. and to help us communicate together and so i can be better of course and then it's like this is great like i'm so so it was a, it was a weird that's good inter-learning that like experience <laughs> i'm i'm always whenever i'm doing something together with someone i'm always trying to like convey that hey this is my opinion right this, this is like yeah this is how i feel and you don't have to do it like do what works for right. you Right when you were standing on the rock yesterday, when I was taking, <laughs> yeah. and you're like, "No, I don't feel comfortable with this." And then feel comfortable. Yeah, like do like... do what feels comfortable. <laughs> yeah, Peter. Peter was like, "You know, it's like when you're doing modeling stuff, you do this." And I was like, "You know what? I have no experience <laughs> doing." <laughs> and, that, and that is also something because since I've I've been doing modeling since what was it, like Ages. 2012, yeah, yeah. A decade. So it's like a decade, and I know how to look good in front of a camera, yeah. like do the moves and do this and pose. And for me, it's natural. Right. For, for me, it's something that I know. So for me, it's obvious when I talk to you. But then when you, like, when you you say, person? <laughs> yeah, exactly. When you say that you're not comfortable, that is when it kind of like pops up in my head. Oh, of course. You, you haven't done it. Yeah. There, there's the skill that I haven't done, yeah. which I bet if I did it for 10 years, I'd be a lot more comfortable like pulling off the glasses. And but it's also, it's also very important and very, uh, how do you say, like very... Uh, very important and very what is the word for that <laughs> crucial yeah crucial that you actually say that you're uncomfortable well because th that that's a really fine line and that's where like i was i was thinking of what heather would say if we we're there because at a certain point i was like what i would do is this like stupid thing yeah. and i was like i don't know i've seen those photos so this <laughs> they look to great the, straight into the trash can but that was where i was like this is what i feel like i'm doing what i'm doing and there's a fine line between sometimes you need to push yourself out of a comfort zone yeah. and build a new skill that's going to feel super weird and you're going to need time to practice it and there are other times where it's just not your thing, but you don't know. Yeah, of course. You have to. You have you, to you attempt get to try to see which one it is. And 
just because it is uncomfortable doesn't mean it's not your thing. Yeah. Because like this was super uncomfortable at first, being in front of a camera and talking and like, oh my god. And yes. Now, <laughs> couldn't care less about that. No. As long as it's not being a model. <laughs> no, Currently. but I, I, it's also one of those things. Like I, for me, I like when it looks cool. Yeah. Right. I like when I look like a you're, you're an easy person to make hero. look cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, like it but, just happens. But it's like. I like that. I like when it looks like an action movie. I like when it yeah. looks like I'm standing there superhero style. That is me. Right. That is my kind of style. And people always comment that, like, this is Peter Lindgren. And I love that. But it's not for everyone. Right. Right? Yeah. And I think that <laughs> it's also very important when, when you and I are working together or when we're out shooting, as you did yesterday, like saying that, you know what? I'm not really comfortable with this. Because... It also opens up a door that okay, if this is not like, then it's okay. Yeah. Right. Because we were last night at dinner, we were talking about like Heather and I were talking about that we're both at a point where we feel more comfortable being more assertive and aggressive, like yeah. um, reaching out to to brands and sponsors yeah. and and not just kind of waiting, but being a little more proactive about that. And there's a few that like that I, um, you know, have been like considering doing that too and you guys asked like okay so what would you do if you pitch this thing to them and they said no <laughs> and I went on like a 10 minute thing of like well this is how I would feel and what I would do and then this and that blah 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 and you're like my god Tom you just say okay if not that then how could we like yeah what about how could we come here? to an agreement yeah like they're not saying they're and not saying Tom no was you. going like I probably wouldn't use them in my videos as much and I probably wouldn't do this yeah it's uh, like hey, you know I, 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 no. It, it was <laughs> never occurred to you. The, the idea, yeah, because I was like, they said no. And you're like, no, they're not saying no to you. They're saying no to that thing. Yeah. But you are fine. You are not that thing. Yes. And this is kind of the same thing of like, okay, you're doing something that's not working or you have a different idea. Yeah. And, and even film, and even shooting yesterday, because you, you, you know, you have an idea of like, hey, we're doing this thing. I'm climbing up here. So get a shot of me doing this. But I am the one behind the camera who's seeing it. So I can see like, actually, this doesn't work. But if the camera's over here, yeah. it looks a little better. But you can't. So I need to be the one that then goes like, actually, I think this is going to be yeah. the way to go. Because exactly. And I think that that is also something that is very important when you're when you're doing things together with a friend or when you're yeah. doing something. Don't be afraid to tell someone that it doesn't look good. Yeah. But say it in the right way. Yeah. This is a piece of crap. Yeah. <laughs> Something that I try to do is I say, I don't like it. Because then it's my personal opinion. Yeah. I don't say that you did a bad job. Right. Right? It's like, no, I don't like that. Because it could also be, it could be like, I did a thing that's totally fine, but you're maybe in a pose or exactly. something that, that, that I'm unaware of. I think it looks cool. And you're like, I actually don't like it when I look that way. So... Technically, there's flies here. Yes, <laughs> say no. Technically, everything is correct, but there's just something that happens with Heather all the time. Where I'm like, oh, we're taking photos or whatever, and like this photo is perfect. And she's like, no, I, I hate like my hair from that angle. And I'm like, oh, I didn't. To me, this looks perfect. But yeah. she's like, I wouldn't want to use that photo because I don't like something about it. Exactly. And yeah, and you know, I know there's the it's the old like Hollywood thing of like, oh, one more for safety. That was perfect, but just one more for safety. And yeah, like, but yeah. I think I think you should apply, or not you, but if you're listening and you want to go out and shoot with your friends and you don't think that they do like the job that you want right. them to do, is try to empower them to do what you want them right. to do. Rather than say that I don't like this, you're do not it good at that, you should do it like this. Try to say like, you know what? I think we can make it looked better if we did this. Yeah. Because if you do that, then all of a sudden the person will feel like, oh, well, you're working all right. together. Yeah. To, come on, to let's come up do with it. the ideas and yeah. Or what if I what if I climb up here? You don't even have to comment that you didn't like it. Yeah. Or, you know. And 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 also if you're the one who's, it's okay. I guess if on either end, behind or in front of the camera. You just admitting when you messed up. Like there were a bunch of times yeah. where I'm using lenses I haven't used before. Even though it's <laughs> yeah. the same camera, the buttons are assigned differently. So there were many times where I was like, that looked cool, but I messed up the focus. <laughs> yeah. And it would have been very easy to go like, that looked cool. Like I don't want to make you climb up a thing again or whatever. But then you're going to get the footage back and you're going to yeah. be like, I can't use this shot. Yeah. Because it's out of focus. So it's like what's better right now is to make you climb up the rock again. Yes. And sometimes, especially when you're working in video production, if you're out shooting in the sunset or something you yeah. gotta make sure there's a time crunch that you just like crunch off those shots yeah. get them make sure that you have enough in the bank and then yeah then it's done 
<laughs> that, so that was it was fun so like I, it makes me really want to be able to like have that opportunity more yeah so if you want to Come, come around the world repeatedly. I, I would love to come <laughs> over again because this. I feel like this trip, in one way, it, it was like, it started off bad. <laughs> uh, it started off good, but then uh, like the beginning of it. Day two, day two, day, I got a text message. Yeah. I was like, just a heads up, I'm feeling a little funky. Yeah, I was like, uh -oh. I was like, I was in the bedroom, and then like texting Tom, who was literally outside. I was in like, like the living room out here or something. I'm like, oh god, damn. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. I can go to the drugstore. I can get some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been it's been great so far. Um, yeah. So that's and and obviously like there's there's different trips because this is we've been in we've been gone to a couple locations but yeah. we you know there's a lot of the U S to see. Oh, of course. There's more than California. There's, there's more than there's so much that I want to see. I want to get back and see. Like what I would love to do is to take a two or four week trip just cruise around the yeah. entire u.s see like monument valley and grand canyon that road kind of trips stuff. yeah it's there's just so many different locations when you compare it to sweden because sweden is kind of the same you know in the summer it's summer and then winter is winter <laughs> doesn't matter where, where you go really yeah no like how it is right now even though it's the time of year it is right now there is somewhere like battling a winter snowstorm mm. and like crazy weather and, that blows my mind yeah in, in the same in country. the same country so that, the, that is weird and that's the thing I mean you and I talked about this and if you're if you're listening to this or watching and you're from the US you know this but it's easy for people who've never been here to go like hey I'm gonna be there for a week I wanna go to New York I wanna check out Vegas oh, yeah, no. I wanna go to the <laughs> beach in LA like let's go see the Redwoods and it's like that's three weeks like you can't <laughs> just the distance to go like you're not living that far from LA no but just hours. the distance to go yeah to LA it's 110 miles. It's like two, two and a half hours. Yeah. I live two hours from everything, basically. That's like, we go for a weekend, like when we go to Amanda's parents. And it's two and a half hours. And it's two and a half Yeah, I know this is like, yeah, I'll pick you up at the airport. That's <laughs> <laughs> like half a day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just, that is the reality of it, but it, I also am happy I don't live in LA, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your plans moving forward like from this point on with your channel, with everything that you're doing right now? The, the So the biggest thing and what Heather and I always focus on is like the sustainability of it. Yeah. Because there, there are certain things that happen like the, you know, recently the Roadcaster Pro 2 yeah. was announced and I was lucky enough that I was one of 10 people in the world that they sent one to and then just because they had issues on their end. There were a whole bunch of issues. <laughs> Even the people who got them didn't have working. Like, they were working, but they were almost bricked. They had yeah. no firmware. So you turn it on, just as like, congratulations, you're lucky. This will be active in the middle of June. You can't do anything <laughs> with it. Um, and Road obviously, was kind of like, well, geez, we don't want that to happen, but we, we don't want to send out a bunch of, like, beta firmware to people. Yeah. And, and then they see something that's just part when you do a beta firmware it's just going something that's going to be fixed but somebody might take that as like a problem even though it isn't and so they were like okay tom can we send you the beta firmware and then um you know you can use it you can use it you understand what beta firmware is and then at least you can get a, ha a feel for it and and start sharing a user perspective instead of a company perspective oh boy <laughs> and I was, <laughs> I was like uh, the dogs are like <laughs> And I was like, of course I'm going to do that. But that meant, outside of the factory, I'm the only person in the world with a working one, which is nuts. <laughs> and also, obviously, I'm like, I have to take advantage of this because that's going to yeah. disappear very quickly. So it's like, normally I produce a video a week. Yeah. Last week, I did three plus two streams and like a <laughs> podcast. That's and, cool. and on top of that, like, like, I think I had like three client calls. And it was absolute insanity. But it, it needed to happen. It was really good for the channel. It was like a moment that you have to seize. And I know if I could do that, if I could operate at that level every week, things would grow like crazy. And I would die in two months. <laughs> so it has to be like the sustainable thing of, okay, there are certain things I know I need, I can do that will help growth. Mm. But I also want to keep wanting to do this in five years or as long as possible. And me just destroying myself and burning myself out isn't isn't the way to do that so there are times when you need to push and crunch and times when you need to like stick to the routine and i kind of feeling that out a little bit yeah um and being more aggressive about not so much aggressive as comfortable with reaching out which i've really been trying to practice because you've helped me a lot thank goodness like if i ever have questions <laughs> i can just text you like 
this, thinking of this, is this okay, whatever. Um, and what I've done is because I've been hesitant for working with brands, yeah. I've always been waiting for the ones I'm interested in to come to me because then yes. I feel like you're in, you're, you are in a more powerful position if of they course. ask you because then you're like, well, this is my rate. And if they say no, you're like, well, you came to me. It always sucks if someone's like, if you go to them, you're like, this is my rate. And you're like, no. And you're like, well, shoot. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> now they're in the powerful position. But so many people would never even know that it's even an option, you know? No. So reaching out for, there's lots of people you have relationships with that you've known for a long time and being comfortable going, hey, I have this idea. Or like, you know what I've, you know what I've been doing for years. Like, I think it's a good fit for us to do this. And it's a win for everybody because it helps me be, continue to be like independent. It helps you as the brand. And because it's something that fits, it actually helps the viewer. It's not yeah. just forcing them to sit and watch an ad for something I don't care about. So it's a win for everybody, especially it if it's some, the kind of content you might make anyway, but you have to be proactive about reaching out of course, to people to do that. And, um, I think it's a great strategy. It's taken half a decade for me to feel comfortable doing that, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 hard. I got to give you that because it's it comes down to knowing how to run a business basically yeah. and and do it with a profit. Yeah, and the, and the viewers are the customers and I've seen I've just seen so many channels go down the literally like shoot themselves in the foot. Well, I guess not literally, figuratively shoot themselves in the foot by <laughs> suddenly like there's way too much sponsorship stuff there's way yeah. too much like and it, it really hurts the channel it hurts the relationship with the viewer it does and then obviously then it tanks things which probably hurts brand relationships as well so it ends up hurting everything but doing none of that is also kind of dumb because you have these opportunities and you have these and you've worked hard to build something that has a value so just throwing that away is stupid too yeah so there's a balance that everyone has to strike for themselves. It is. And I, in the beginning of this year, I signed a deal with a company that allowed me to secure the entire year. And it felt so good. Coke Zero. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Fat tire beer. Thank you. No. But it feels so good to be able to know that, okay, this amount of money is coming in as long as I make this amount of videos. Yeah. And then you don't have to rely on affiliate sales. You have or a safety net. AdSense. Or, yeah, exactly. Even though I'm going to say that I have good affiliate sales. But the more companies that you can work with, the more companies that you can secure and have that safety net with, the better you're going to be off. Yeah. Right? And we, we were kind of talking about this yesterday. And it'd be an interesting thing to go in because all around the world, whether it's your country or my country, signs are pointing towards a recession. Yes. And the last huge recession that really impacted a lot of people was 2008. And our jobs didn't exist in 2008. Yes, so you can't look back. It's hard to look back and do a one-to-one -one comparison anyway. But you can't look back and go, like, oh, what did a content creator, how did they weather that? Or what did they do to stay successful? It wasn't a thing. No. So now it, it's sort of like you can kind of see where it's very scary. It's like, well, does that job disappear? Or is it yeah. a situation where that's actually a, a really strong position to be in? And you, I can see arguments either way, but it's something that's really important to be aware of. It is. Because something has to be changing soon. Yeah, but I was, I was actually reading a, an article yesterday about this exact topic and looking at all the different like um, statistics that the bureaus and newspapers have put together, they think that like influencer marketing is just going to grow. I, I, that's kind of my hope too, because it is from a company's perspective, way cheaper yeah. than traditional marketing and way more effective. It is. So that's good. And, and, and I think we've talked about this before. I want to make sure the red <laughs> ring is going around the screen. <laughs> I think we've talked about this before, but when it comes to uh, content creators and uh, what was it? I lost it. Content creators and... Uh, Super cool. Yes, no money. Uh, content creators, come on. Bring it back, Peter. Recession, business, governments, economics. Yes, it was something like that. We've talked about that before. It had something to do with influencer brands and marketing. Brand. And I, I totally lost it. That's okay. There you go. You know what? That's like it's gone. Jet beer. Are real. I'm gonna blame Fat Tire. Yeah. <laughs> no longer. Yeah, the it. deal is over. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> 
Zero. <laughs> it's also, um, I know, I mean, you've handled the jet lag very well, but it is your nighttime pretty much at this point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For me, it's fine. Yeah. It's you're, middle of the day. Yeah. Your family's <laughs> going to sleep right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, talking about creator economy and that kind of stuff, I think at least that moving forward into like 2023, 2024, I think that is only going to grow. But as we talked about yesterday, it's also going to be harder to become a brand. From, this is like when you start. This is interesting to me because it goes against what the, the most common thing is. Is it too late to start a YouTube channel? No, there's always time. You just got to get started, yeah. get started, get started. But you are saying that maybe it is actually going to be harder to get to a point where where you can like sustain yourself yeah. financially. I think, yeah, because if you, if you see, as we said, you know, when you see a bunch of channels, right, you have a thousand channels that are within the camera niche. Every single one of them looks incredible. It they sound incredible. incredible. They are super skilled. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is something that you didn't see four years ago. Yeah, it was rough. It was rough. <laughs> like you had, you had several channels that were, were good. And then you had a lot of like, okay, what's going on here? <laughs> and then you didn't have this oversaturated, everyone wants to look the same and do the same thing. Right. Now it's more like, as we've talked about as well, people buy things and make a video on that and then make four videos on that and then they return that and yeah. then then they only make the videos because they want to make videos on the products that are popular so that they can get the views and grow their channel. Right. Which is one strategy, I guess. But I think that something to focus on is to be more unique. I yeah. mean, like, everyone can have nanolights in the background and make it look the way that I have it if you want. Right. But then it's just going to look like a PL set. Right. A little Bobo knockoff dollar yeah. store version. So why? Why would you do that? Exactly. I mean, like, do it your own way. I mean, like, you can take what I... Because it's also something worth knowing for those listening and watching. Like, my inspiration off my studio is from Casey Neistat. Me too. But our studios look very different. Yes, <laughs> it is. You utilize the walls. I use the walls and the bright lights. Exactly. And I utilize the long room, the walls, and have a lot of free space in between. So I can do stuff yeah. that is interesting there. I can push boxes in. I can do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But... It doesn't look like Casey's studio. No. Right? Not at all. Yours doesn't look like Casey's studio. No, it doesn't. So we took something, like an idea, what we liked, and then applied our own thing. Yeah. And then we ended up with something that people think is kind of iconic. But now it's our thing. So if people, like, if, if you want to start your own thing, then make sure they take the inspiration, but don't yeah. do the same thing. Because, so Casey's studio is what drew me to his videos initially. Like, they were popping up, and I just wasn't watching them because it's it just, I, it just seemed like the thing that was super popular. Like, my high school kids liked them, and I was like, <laughs> I don't need to watch, like, a prank channel or something. I didn't know what it was. And then I finally watched one. It was him in his studio talking. And he's good, obviously, so the yeah. video was interesting. But the studio was fascinating to me because it, it looked like a place where when the camera was off, he was still doing stuff. Yeah. Like, he's working on projects, he's making, like, and that was really interesting to me. Like, you're in somebody's space, and there's definitely a difference between something like that versus a set where it's like, we're going to build these shelves, we're going to put decorations on them, we're never going to touch those yeah. things. Uh, which is also, there's nothing wrong with that either. But it's a very different that. thing. And so what I liked was, okay, I want to make something where it, I, where it feels like you're in a space that I, I do things when the camera's not running too. Mm. And, and then that was just my office where I did, I did work and I played music and I did all that kind of stuff. So it's like, oh, yeah, come in here, yeah. hang out in here, and that's where, that's where I'll make the videos. Yeah, and that ties in with, like, the unique thing because – you have all these things that you like. You have all these things that you do when you're not making videos. Right. So tie those things in like yeah. to, to your set. Like what is the personal things that can be you in the background of your videos? Yeah, it doesn't have – yeah. The, the vast majority, at least up until recently, have a drum set in the back. But my, I'm not a music channel. <laughs> <laughs> Even still, most of the background is like guitars or amps or whatever. And it's like yeah. I don't talk about music basically ever. No. But it's it's it looks cool and it's fun and when you watch it it, it kind of I don't have to say anything about it but it gives you another side of yeah. me as a person and that's cool. It is and I think that like for those listening that wants to 
begin the journey. It's not impossible. Like just because we said that it's gonna get harder and the market yeah. is saturated. Because it doesn't matter how you see it, every market at some point does get saturated. Yeah. Everything right? it matures, it plateaus. Yeah. It, it happens. And then and then a new company takes over and then this and that happens. So <laughs> like if you're starting out, there's no yes or no that you're not gonna be successful or that you are going to be successful. But I think my personal opinion I'm just saying this. Right. Uh, is that you got to be more unique. You got to be you. You got to be like, what can you bring to the table? To YouTube. To YouTube. <laughs> it's right there in the Dear name, right? God. <laughs> the puns. I love them. <laughs> That's why Peter really got sick. <laughs> it's like, <"Bleh." laughs> no, but just just think about that when you're starting out, because yeah. you know, if you're trying to be Peter Lingeren or Tom Buck, then it, it it probably will not work. You have to lean into the things that that do make you stand out. We were talking yesterday. I was watching an old video that was related to one we were working on yesterday, and it was a really solid video. Like it's a very clear, well produced. It's a good video. I'm confident in that being a good video. <laughs> There's no personality in that video. It's, it's like, from three or four years ago, and it, it is just this is what we're talking about today. This is what the thing is. You just need to do this and push this button and put this over here, and then it will do that thing. Cool. I have the information. But kind of anybody could give that information out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess it takes a skill or, or somebody to make it clear and stuff, but a lot of people can do that. What can you do that makes it so nobody else could have made that video? Yeah. And then it's worth noting that it requires a lot of practice. I mean, like yes. sitting in front of the camera like this, talking to it, being just comfortable with the camera rolling and not thinking about your mistakes. Yeah. It requires a lot of practice. It does. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, so people, most of the time, it's like one of the recent things that I've been thinking about is people saying, okay, so, oh, you're doing YouTube, like just recording yourself. I'm right. Like, so easy. Here, take the camera, do it. <laughs> it's like, people are going to be like, Ugh. well, that, that goes back to, to the idea of when somebody says something negative or critical or whatever, you know, this video sucks, you're bad at yeah. this, you need to change yeah. that. There are people out there who are just unbalanced. Yes. I can't help them. <laughs> <laughs> but there are also people out there who will be critical, will do that because it looks so easy. This is just a guy sitting in a room. Yeah. This is just a guy walking around with a camera, filming his hands or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, I think that the vast majority of people that say those things, if they shadowed you from the process, from the outlining process to the getting out, making the video, putting it together, putting this video together while also simultaneously getting this video going over here, stressing about, is this good enough? Is that good? Should I do this? Okay. The thumbnail, putting it up, that, that whole process, nobody, nobody could then say, would say something bad about it. Cause they would see like, Oh my God, like, <laughs> like, even if it's not for me, even if the final video is not the video that like, it's not a video I want to watch or anything. It's still like the respect that you have for, yeah. It's like, I don't like this food, but I understand why other people like it. I, yeah. And I understand the skill that went into making this dish. It's just not my favorite meal. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. You don't go to the restaurant and they get, like, your plate of food. And then you say, like, oh, so you're just cooking food, huh? Yeah, I, I have a kitchen. I can just yeah, cook food if I, can, I want. I, I can cook. <laughs> yeah, I have a stove. It's, <laughs> it's like, like, yeah, okay, well, I'm not a five-star restaurant or whatever. Yeah. Why so not? I always think about that. When 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 you're starting out, it's, it's one of those things that I... I would have loved to have that in my mind that it is hard sitting and talking in front of the camera. Yeah. I didn't think it was. No, it, it for sure is hard. And that is the performance part of it, even if you're being very much yourself. Because, like, you know, I, I know we've been talking as friends for years. Yeah. But not face to face. No. But the person you are when we talk on FaceTime or whatever, the person you are sitting here is the same person that I see in Thank the videos. You. But when you're in the videos, there is, there is, I guess performance is the word. I don't know if that's the right word or not. Doesn't mean you're not being true to yourself, but you're, you're aware you're being filmed. You're speaking in a certain way. You're hitting certain points. You're emphasizing things like, of course, that's exhausting. It is, <laughs> but, but it's also the reason why that is happening. Like when, why anyone of us does it is because it makes the videos more engaging. Yeah, hundred percent. If you look at anyone that is like a TV host, if they were just sitting at their couch at home, they would probably be pretty similar, but they wouldn't sit like, "Hi there, and welcome to Fox News." You yeah, know? 
It's, yeah. it's like it, it is a performance to be in front of the camera. It's like being a public speaker. You have to engage the audience. Yeah. And you can't engage the audience without pointing out certain things. You have a specific tonal in your voice, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you're gauging them. Yeah. Okay, they might be getting bored here, so I need to like, uh, like. And then you do also something. see the edits. Right. Right. So you always see the edited videos, yeah. which is the like. Do, 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 Wait, do. So that's another thing. Like watching you mess up, is great. <laughs> it makes me feel so much better because, it, like you know, a lot of people will post funny bloopers. Like here's yeah. a thing fell down, or I said I accidentally said something goofy. But what people don't often share because why would you? Is the thing where it's like, this is the Rode Pod mic, and it. Ha- <laughs> the Rode Pod mic is, when it the, comes to microphones, the Pod mic, and you're just the same thing. It's like thing. the brain farts. Yeah, 12 times, or you, you just can't get over one word is just throwing up the, the Pod Rode mic. No, the, ah, and you just, just going through until you get it right, or just trying it, like, I got it, but it didn't feel right, so I'm going to do it again and again, and nobody sees that. They just, no. see the, they just see the part where it looks like, he did this in one take, and it's so smooth. Yeah. And <laughs> it is amazing, but, but that brings us back to, like, the beginning of, the podcast where we talked a little bit about editing how editing is kind of the superpower oh my god so much so so So, much so practice editing i'm gonna say that thousand times over yeah it is so crucial because so many times i've been recording like for example the best thing ever that i got is when i stomped the boxes like in our garbage room (laughs) that is the most boring thing to watch like literally right you just see the camera and me for like 10 minutes stomping the boxes. Right? Yeah. Long one shot. And then you create like all of a sudden it's 20 seconds of like super frenetic, like timed beats. Yeah. Yeah. That it's all that's 100 percent just in the edit. Yeah. And learning to edit yourself, like, you know, the, the amount of times you splice sentences together yeah. and throw this over here and you know, it's not that you're changing the meaning or anything, but you're making it clear. And then even once you get it where it's like, this sounds good and it looks good, then going through and going like, I already said this, chop it out. Or I said a yeah. version of this. This actually isn't about this point. And then like literally editing as in like chopping out and condensing things yeah. to be as tight as possible. That's very much a skill that requires practice. It is. How do you feel? Do you think we're... I think uh, we're... I think our cam- think camera... I'm super impressed that the camera is out here in this weather, <laughs> FX3. <laughs> Fan is set to auto, no overheating, uh, running full time, running two microphones directly into the camera. That is impressive. Yeah, with the screen on sun, full brightness mode. It is. You know what? Good job, it's FX3. A, it's a good camera. Thank you so much. The, my, yeah. beer, my beer's over. Yours full. I was starting to get a little gur- gurgly up in here, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to stick with the, the Coke Zero for now. Anyway, so, it, was, it, it was great having an IRL podcast on. Yes. <laughs> and maybe at some point we'll have another one at some point. When it's feasible, yes, because There's normally we are on. A, normally it is one of us is asleep when the other's awake, basically. So. Yeah, that is something that <laughs> I have realized going over here that like the time difference is way too big. It's it's hard. It is like now, as you said, like a man is going to sleep and we're sitting here, we're talking, and then this morning when I texted Amanda like it's six a.m., she's like, "Good afternoon." Yeah, it's like, like three p.m. or something. Yeah, so. We talked about this when Tom is waking up and it's 4 p.m. at my place. Yeah. He hasn't experienced anything during that day. I'm not even used to like talking yet. I'm, no. I try, <laughs> those days I always tried to talk a lot to Heather in the morning. Like, yeah, today we're doing this and this, like just to get it going. But yeah, nothing has happened. So you're like, how's your day? And I'm like, it's great. I had toast. Like, it's good. But yeah, your day is, you're like, oh, these things happen. I talked to this person. This yeah. thing developed. I finished making this project. No, but we're... We're going to try to make something. Yeah, there's also just the, the time constraints where yeah. it's like the very realistic like podcast is amazingly fun and I would do them all day every day. But if you need to spend time doing a thing that's going to pay for a house yeah. or pay it, like... It, it comes down to the business perspective. Yeah. Of it. I mean like spending time making money or spending time having fun when you got to uh, like weigh them against each other at some point. Yeah. It's, and it's and selfishly, hard. for me, I get to talk to you either way, so <laughs> it's cool. It is great. It has, it has been super fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad. I appreciate it. I mean, geez, two and a half years ago, Who would I, wouldn't have have picked, I wouldn't have thought YouTube is weird. The internet is weird. The things that can happen are weird. <laughs> now and, we're sitting here. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy. So I'm super happy you're here. Yeah, I'm super happy to be here, Tom. Yeah, I'm glad you're feeling good. Thank you for being the best host ever. Oh, yeah, thank you. Can, please leave us a good Airbnb review. Yes, I will. Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, five <we're>... stars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to follow Tom over on his channel. Uh, I'm gonna drop a link down in the description below because this is gonna be posted to my blog channel. You know that. Yeah, I was. I, was, I don't know where this is going. Yeah. But th this will be somewhere on my, um, I think, Patreon and, and channel members' yeah. videos. So subscribe to Tom, and uh, just enjoy his videos. He's so close. 200k so we're gonna try to get him there it was i was hoping there'd be a miracle and it would happen while you were here because yeah. that would just be cool that'd be cool it didn't happen i mean there's still time who if knows something crazy I, happens I can, today you know i can edit the video that we shot yesterday <laughs> i ain't gonna do it in one hour <laughs> if that video just is the most insane let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. crop in crop out yeah no so anyway. uh thanks so much for listening watching whatever you've been doing and uh wherever you've been sitting we appreciate you it's been amazing to have you, and uh, thank you for following the podcast and uh, me and Tom and our journey, and uh, we can't wait to see yours. Definitely appreciate it. And now I can use the Sony remote to wrap up the show. <laughs>